I want to, um, gosh, thank, thank the um, group of individuals that made today possible 25 years ago. And um, I'm glad I'm at Bluegrass. I think today really, um, gosh, gives an example of, of what Bluegrass means and, and how it has grown over the years. You know, Bluegrass, um, over the last 25 years, uh, the predominant color when it started was a uh, I guess a royal, was it a royal blue or a royal blue? Sky blue and, and, and colonial. So they tried to incorporate several things and then it changed to a, a dominant color of red and black as you can see and, and remain the coats until just a few years ago and then a few years ago it went from the coats to the bulldogs. So um, bluegrass is a very diverse school and, and um, that's one thing that for, for me it really attracted uh, me to bluegrass is the diversity, is the ability to take on um, change, just like the change that we've seen over the years, over 25 years, of where the bluegrass uh, school started and, and where it is today, and that's that's what's amazing. Um, the school um, and the faculty creating the positive environment and and um, creating experiences with students every day, um, and I know that that's happened over 25 years, and that's. Um, attested by the individuals on my left and, and right. The work that they did and, and um, starting and creating a school is a very, very um, difficult process. I've never been through that, but I'm, I'm sure it's a difficult process from the groundbreaking all the way through to the first day of school. It's, it's got to be a tough um, thing to do, but a wonderful thing to do because some of those same values and some of those same processes, uh, processes that was put into place that first year is still here, is still alive and still working. Um, I've been to a lot of different schools and, and uh, some 25 years old, some a few years older, but um, I, I want to commend, you know, Hardin County Schools. To me, the school is so well kept. I mean, when I look at the videos and everything um, that we took out of the capsule and you'll see tonight, the school was, um, you know, everything was brand new and, and just looked so um, neat and cool. And But when you still compare that to today, 25 years later, it's uh, still a very well-kept school. It's a beautiful school. And um, and I, I, over the last six years, have just absolutely fallen in love with it. Uh, so much so, if you go in my office, I have above my, um, my desk, uh, we love bluegrass. And I do love bluegrass. I love the students and I love uh, what all of the change and, and the diversity that it brings. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Mr. Burks and um, let him introduce the next person, I think. This is a quick hitter for me. Uh, I want to introduce Russell Pike at this time. He was uh, first year here with us as a sixth grader. So I'll ask Russ to come up and say a few words. And he has another engagement, so he will have to leave shortly. First thing I would like to do is thank Mr. Burks, Mr. Reed, for inviting me tonight. It's a privilege to come out here. Uh, 25 years, as I look over here, it's, it's neat to see some of the faces that I haven't seen. And then others I've had the privilege to work with. Um, but 25 years as a brand new kid in a brand new school, sixth grade, had all those nervous, anxious, excited, a little bit scared, uh, didn't know what to expect. Would I be able to find all of my classes? Were the teachers really as mean as they looked? <laughs> Was I going to get stuffed in a locker? And as the uh, school year got underway, I realized that all of my fears were not going to be realized. Um, actually, quite the opposite happened. Uh, because of teachers like Ms. Bieber, Mr. Graham, Mr. Vickers, Ms. Holman, Ms. Hensley, Ms. Clark, Ms. Meredith, Ms. Pennington, I realized that teachers weren't mean after all and they actually cared about their students. Uh, Ms. Parker, Mr. Maggard, Ms. Grunke, Ms. Boglin, Mr. Franklin, Ms. Lang, Ms. Hayes, Mr. Skees, and Mr. Thomas. I learned the school could be a fun place. And I also learned to push myself so that I could reach the goals that I thought were unattainable. Thanks to administrators like Mr. Reed, and Mr. Burks, Ms. Campbell, Ms. Earls. Uh, they did want the best for their students. 
On more than one occasion, I remember Mr. Burks and Mr. Reed congratulating me on a basketball game, me and my guy, my buddies. They would congratulate you. They actually cared about how the kids were doing. Uh, thanks to coaches like Coach Hugh O'Brien, Coach Greg Rawlings, Coach J.C. Wright. Uh, they taught us what hard work really meant. Uh, they helped instill a sense of grit and determination in me and my teammates, and these values have served me well as I've had the honor to become a coach for the last 12 years at Central Harden Wrestling. Uh, I hope that maybe in 25 years my student athletes are able to look back and remember as fondly about me as I do about, about those gentlemen. Uh, my family has been, was involved at Bluegrass Middle School for 10 years, from 1990 to 2000. Uh, myself, I had a younger sister, an older brother, and two other brothers. We all came through here. So for 10 years, we spent a lot of time uh, in these walls, and my parents did as well. Um, the teachers invested into our lives time and energy. So I, I appreciate what you all have done. And you've been positive influences because, after all, I went through, and because of you guys, the positive influences you were, I, I went into the education field. So as I look at my time here at Bluegrass, I do have fond memories. The faculty and staff made sure that students did feel welcomed, felt safe, and that they were challenged academically. I found it wasn't, it's not always, always that easy to make it, make the kids feel that way now that I'm a teacher. So. Uh, I would like to say thank you to every teacher, coach, principal, counselor, cafeteria worker, and custodian here at Bluegrass. You all made Bluegrass what it was and set the bar high for the future. You helped me, my family, and every other student to learn to challenge ourselves and dream big, so thank you. Thank you, Russ. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Miss Jennifer Hazelwood Lewis, who was uh, with us the opening year, 1991. She's now director of the federal programs right across the street, central office. Hello, thank you, thank you. Unlike Mr. Pike, I did not type out an entire speech. <laughs> He's an overachiever. We, we raised a whole crop of overachievers. But I would like to take just a moment, especially to Mr. Reed, Mr. Burks, all the people that I started my career with, people who are out in the audience that came in a little later that were on the faculty and the staff, some of the students that are sitting out there. You know, when I started, I was 21. I told somebody out there earlier I was going to say that. I think it was Miss Clark because she's a principal now, and I feel really old when I look at her because I hadn't put it all together. Um, I was so excited. I was 21. I was getting ready to turn 22. I was getting ready to coach basketball for the first time. I'd been in sports. And so I was, I was just, you know, so excited to come into this school. And as soon as, I, as soon as I walked in on that first day, I mean, I bet you could see my knees shaking over in the next county. They were probably making noise. Just, that was me for the first, oh, you know week, two weeks, no. But Barb Phelps, I was sitting in the uh, gymnasium because at the beginning of the school, of uh, the school day for that very first day, we had all the students loaded in, in the gymnasium. And we had our list of students, and I was looking down, you know, already trying to memorize all the names so I could just automatically put a face with a name so, you know, I would look like I really knew what I was doing when I got into the room. And there was a student, and I, I'm not going to mention names, but this young man passed through, and Barb looked at me, and we didn't know each other either. This was really our only second day together after opening day, and she said, oh, and she said this young man's name. He really struggled, you know, last year, and he is going to be repeating, trying to get through his eighth grade year again. And so I said, oh, what's his name? And she said the name, and I'm looking at my list. I've got, he's on my list. So I get into my room, you know, and, and I'm ready, and, and I'm talking about, you know, you're supposed to introduce yourself and try to make a connection but with your likes and, and your hobbies and, you know, and just what you want to do for the year and set your goals and set your expectations, and then your kids talk about themselves. 
and they go around and, and they're telling me what they like and their interests. And this young man, we get to him, and he looks up at me and he leans back and he puts his hands behind his head. And he said, so Ms. Hazelwood, you're a first year teacher? I guess that means you're not very good, huh? I've never skipped a beat, and I have Barb Phelps to thank for this, and I don't think he could get away with saying this again. But I said, so, Mr., and I said his name, which I just happen to know because of Ms. Phelps. You're a second year eighth grader. I assume you're an expert. You can help me out. <laughs> and listen, I never had a minute's trouble out of that class for the rest of the year. But I do want to say, a huge special thank you to uh, Mr. Burks and Mr. Reed. I don't know if you realize what a tag team dynamic duo we had when we started here, but it also offered me a glimpse into what I wanted to do with my life in the principal's role in helping uh, staff, helping students, and trying to branch out. In the very first day, opening day, David Reed made one of the most profound comments and I used it on every opening day for my 11 years at Lincoln Trail Elementary. And he always dressed in a blue suit, and he's got half of it on uh, tonight. <laughs> but um, he made the comment that day, and I think he did it almost every opening day himself, but he was talking about when our kids come into this building, or any building, it is our job and our responsibility to be the best and to do the best that we could do every time, every single time we come into contact with those kids. And he said, and your parents, those can be your biggest advocates, but this is what he said. He said, those parents are sending you the best that they have, and they love those kids. Everything I am really goes back to that comment. Thank you. Well, it looks like I get to introduce myself. <laughs> okay, I, I knew this I was wanted around words. here. <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to do that. No, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you guys who know me know I'm not a speech writer or anything like that, but I couldn't see my notes anyway. I'm so old that uh, I, I didn't do it anyway. But I think back on uh, before we opened, uh, remember when I was at Radcliffe Middle School, Charlie Jones thankfully hired me. Jill Campbell put up with me as a counselor up there. And uh, I stand out in the hallway. And I remember I knew David because uh, my brother and his wife taught at Alton worked with him. And he, he, I don't even remember this. He walked up to me and he said, what are your plans? What are my plans? Like this weekend, this afternoon, what are you talking about? He said, he told me about what might happen or whatever and uh, <clears throat> asked me if I might be interested in uh, coming down and working. I said, I don't think so. Uh, I said, I like my counseling job. I was coaching and had good athletes, so it made me look like I knew a little bit about basketball, so that helped. And... Uh, I think we talked two or three more times, and finally I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. But I said, you know, I know how you dress and whatever. I said, I just can't wear a coat and tie. I thought for sure they'd get me out of it. And he said, well, we'll figure it out. So I knew I was going to wear a coat and tie then. So opening day, well, I'll back up to the summer first. I didn't realize uh, all the good fringe benefits we had of opening a school. Central office gave us a van. I guess you could call it a van. I remember my passenger, David drove passenger door. Every time we went in our corner, the door flew open. <laughs> and then we were insured that we were going to get uh, all the textbooks we needed. And they, oh, they were all going to be in real pristine shape. That's for sure now. No problem there. And a little later in the year, some student came to me with a history book and said, Mr. Burks, was World War II immediately after the Civil War? I'm missing some pages here. <laughs> that didn't actually happen, but they, they, uh, they took good care of us. Yeah, they, but we got that all figured out. And uh, opening the school, well, I don't, 
this guy right here, what a plan he had. Uh, I just kind of followed around and remember one day back where the science uh, classes are, I literally got lost back here and couldn't find my way back to the front. I got in the middle somewhere and finally got out and I thought, I know I'm in trouble so far. So figured that one out. And then we got to opening day and all of a sudden here come all the buses in and 800 kids show up and we put some here, there, wherever. And I thought, where do I need to go? I, where, where, I thought ninth grade, I better go where the ninth graders are. So I've got my sports coat on that he said I had to wear. So I look, I look on the button and there's a tag hanging on. <laughs> I thought, you're gonna walk in front of some ninth graders with the tag hanging on your coat. So I real quick get some scissors to cut it, cut a hole in the coat. <laughs> so I thought, well, we'll see what happens from there. But anyway, he uh, gave, me, gave me a break, said, if you wear a tie, we'll, we'll figure it out. So I figured I could do that, and by noon I could have it loosened. So, um, but it was, it was uh, interesting opening. Uh, you know, I, I felt bad for the sixth graders coming in with ninth graders, and I felt bad for the ninth graders. <laughs> Here they are going to high school, but they're at a middle school, and that's what a lot of them told me. This just doesn't make sense. I said, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. And uh, in the hallways, just getting through, we had to figure all that out, but we did with the help of everybody to my left here and out in the audience. But uh, we, uh, we got through that, and then when we got in sixth through eighth grade, got teamed and whatever, and everything went real well. Um, we, we had a couple glitches earlier. We uh, had one person from the media that wasn't too proud of us. But uh, David, if you know David, he's a little, little hard-headed. They told him, you don't, you don't argue with somebody that buys their ink by the barrel, not David. So uh, he stood up, and I think that brought us all together when we went through that. Uh, he stood up for, and knew what we, were, what we were and what we were going to be, and... Uh, lo and behold, I think it was two or three years later, just one elementary school and ourselves were the only two reward schools in Hardin County. So that was due to a lot of pulling together and, you know, we did things here, we did things there. I don't understand this, but we all just worked together and made it work. And uh, uh, it, it, it really did. It was, I can, <clears throat> I can honestly say I, I never had a, terrible day. I had some that were shaky. You get one thing going over here and all of a sudden something over here and it's like, where are you supposed to be? But uh, I spent my last 19 years here and I have to admit, it was, it was great. It, it, it was wonderful. Uh, even when I retired, I, <clears throat> I remember somebody made a comment, one of the teachers said, when the buses left, they said, you're probably the happiest person in Hardin County, aren't you? And I said, not really, but it's time. So, uh, but I appreciate everybody uh, anyone that walked in this school, what, what they did to make this school what it is. And uh, it's always been top notch and always will be. Thank you all. And now, the man of the hour, David Reed. <laughs> okay. It's hard to come up here and talk. Uh, this is probably my last faculty meeting with this group. <laughs> and they think it'll probably last long enough. Uh, a lot of things I thought about when I was getting up here to speak this afternoon or this evening, uh, mostly about the time. Again, I've told this a hundred times. We have to quit uh, calling it the time castle. And uh, the reason we talk but for 24 years called it the time castle. Ca castle as a little sixth grader came out there as we was burying it and going, why are you putting in a time castle? And so we just, that caught on, and so we called it that. And when I was talking about digging it up, every time I had to correct myself that we were not digging up a time castle, that we were digging up a time capsule. So uh, people asked, well, uh, aren't you supposed to bury those for 50 or 100 years? I said, well, there's actually no rules for a time capsule or a time castle. Uh, I decided we'd do it for 25 years uh, with the very good chance that I'd be standing here this evening with most of these people and not buried beside of it. So uh, we had a lot of wonderful memories here, as Mr. Burks said. Uh, Mr. Burks and I spend a lot of time, we see each other twice a year, he lives in Florida now. 
And uh, mostly we spend a lot of time like old people talking about the past and what we used to do. And uh, one of the things we always said, we'd have a bad day and things weren't going very well or it would be a disaster or whatever. And we'd go, wonder how long before this is funny. <laughs> and sometimes it would be funny in a day or two. And sometimes it took considerably longer. And a few times we'd look at each other and go, I don't think that's going to be funny this year. <laughs> so, uh, one other story that I always like to tell about just things. We had a teacher come in, very highly recommended, and uh, so I hired her. And uh, she came the first day. And uh, so she came in the second day, said she wasn't happy, and that she was going to need to resign her position. And of course, as a young principal, I, all this, I took it very personally. And uh, so I talked to her and finally she said, well, I just don't feel the love. And without thinking, I looked her straight in the eye and I said, we never show the love till the third day. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that, but anyway. Um, for tonight to be here, we have to uh, give some thanks, and I've got a, a lot of people to thank. Uh, of course, Mr. Elmore, uh, Jessica Conley, Teresa Bennett here. I'd like to thank the staff that worked with us on putting all of this together. Uh, Kathy Cruz, Carolyn Wheatley, Jennifer Lewis, Yutana Bieber, Paula Hildebrand, Jesse Fluid. Uh, Fluid. <laughs> I mistyped that, Floyd. I really did. But that'd be Mr. Floyd. And, uh, and thousands of bluegrass students that have come through these doors. As I've said before, the highlight of my career was building and planting bluegrass. Not many people have the opportunity to do that, but not only build it, but to implement it. And I decided to do that. I was director of middle schools, and I was standing up here on the hill, and they were clearing the site. And I decided uh, the excitement of the central office was more than I could take. And I decided to go back to the school building, and I'm glad I did. Uh, as I've often said, too, that first year, made 10,000 decisions. They were excellent. Unfortunately, should have made 11,000 decisions. Uh, everything totally brand new. Started with uh, several first-year teachers. People said I was crazy to have that many interns. But as I've watched this group and others that started with me, I've taken great pride in watching them being successful in the education field, going on to be superintendent, principals, directors, whatever. And uh, it's hard to believe now that uh, it's been 25 years since I hired these people. But most of all, when I was at Bluegrass, Mr. Parks and this group up here, we had a lot of fun. And uh, I always remember that. Talking about how we started here, there were several people I wanted. Uh, I knew Jill was a great counselor. I'd worked with Barbara Phelps at North Harden before. We worked together several years up there, and uh, she worked here. Uh, Barbara's one of the absolute people that I've never seen frustrated or flustered calm, collected, kept me calm and collected several times uh, when I was going off the deep end. Uh, Mr. Burks, uh, Kelly Burks, I had it uh, coach for me at uh, Alton. And uh, so I went up and I did see Mike and uh, he had a great reputation as a counselor, a great reputation as a basketball coach. No, he had a great reputation as a counselor. Uh, <laughs> And he was a basketball coach. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I've told people a lot over the years, we worked together eight years every day, and we never had a crossword with each other. So uh, I don't know where we didn't care about each other, or, uh, but we really did. Uh, I thought of him as a co-principal. People used to get upset. Uh, they said, does it not bother you when they think Burks is the principal and you're other? Uh, I said no, and most of the kids when they started here and everything was new is they knew they had a tall principal and a short principal, <laughs> and so they got the idea. Uh, Mr. Burks was fantastic with kids. Uh, one of the things you can't talk about him without saying there were many kids that succeeded academically and socially solely 
with the encouragement of Mike Burks. Uh, he never gave up on a kid. So uh, that's quite a testament to his 19 years as assistant principal. Uh, a few other things, though, I need to uh, talk about before I get into the time capsule. Uh, a few personal thanks that I need to uh, express. Probably won't get a chance to do this in front of this crowd again. Uh, in 1975, I came to Hardin County, and that was because of Charlie Jones. Uh, if I've upset you in the last 40 years, see Charlie. Um, <laughs> Another person I have to mention is uh, Ray Story, former principal and superintendent, uh, assistant superintendent, who was a friend and a mentor to many people that worked for him. Uh, Bluegrass uh, was designed by Mr. Clay Downing with affiliated design. Clay and I spent hours and hours together designing this building. Uh, Clay had never been, built a school before, and it took quite a while for me to convince Clay that under no circumstances do you put a wall-mounted thermostat in a middle school restroom. <laughs> he said that works okay in a nursing home. Uh, I said, and very well could. Another person that helped on the design of bluegrass on a daily basis was Ms. Bobby McKinney. We shared offices uh, down at the central office, and the superintendent at that time thought it uh, important that you have lots of committees. And we had a lot of committees. We just didn't have a lot of people on them, mostly Bobby and myself. But there were a lot of decisions that had to be made, and uh, we made a lot, and you couldn't always have a committee. But I would ask Bobby what she thought about some colors, what she thought about different things, and she was very honest. And I appreciated that, have appreciated her and Donnelly's friendship for many years. But uh, Bobby McKinney had a great deal to do with bluegrass. She understood people and she understood schools. So I thank you, Bobby, for helping me along with that. Another person was Edna Zominski. She was the first PTO president here. And she couldn't be here tonight. Her uh, daughter just had a, a baby, her second baby. Sharon Zominski was in the first freshman, as a matter of fact, she was the first freshman uh, uh, class president. But Edna, uh, Without going into a lot of detail, we can say that Edna put us on the map. Uh, she was our first media specialist. And if you don't understand that, I can't go into it. Uh, <laughs> another person that I have to thank is uh, Colonel Charlie Skies, who was our first librarian. Uh, he was also the one that designed uh, the time capsule out here. And uh, I believe it took five hours to open the time capsule so I'm sure his name was mentioned frequently. Uh, but when we opened the time capsule, everything in it was absolutely pristine. It was like it was put in there yesterday. So I do thank Charlie for putting that together. And I do remember it was a very hot day trying to dig a hole in red clay, and uh, we finally got it done. We had, had to actually get a power digger to do it. Uh, some of our original staff here have uh, passed on. Patty Sanop, who taught special ed, uh, passed on, as did uh, Brenda Drain, who taught science. One of the uh, people that started with us and stayed for a long time was Dr. Connie Hayes, who went on to become principal in Olin County and principal in Jefferson County. And Connie was a tireless worker for bluegrass, and she had a passion for teaching and for kids. Uh, rarely have I seen that, so uh, Dr. Connie Hayes was a big part of bluegrass. But talking about uh, the time capsule and what we were doing 25 years ago, uh, jog my memory, the Simpsons made their debut on Fox TV, Unbridled won the Kentucky Derby, the Hubble Space Telescope was launched, I guess it's still up there shaking, uh, Jim Hinton of the Muppets died, Seinfeld debuted on NBC, and one of the things that I found most shocking going back and looking in 1990 was that was the year that Millie Vanilli admitted to lip syncing and her Grammy was revoked. Uh, but we, we handled that as a staff. Uh, did fine. The uh, movie was uh, Dancing with Wolves, Driving Miss Daisy, won the Academy Award. The stamp was 25 cents. The Supreme Court upset the law on 
that banned flag burning. East and West Germany was unified. The Iraqi troops invaded Kuwait, which set the stage for Desert Shield and Desert Storm. San Francisco won the Super Bowl. The World Series, Cincinnati defeated Oakland. And 90 saw the world, uh, the, I guess the unveiling or the invention of a thing called the World Wide Web is created. So that changed everything. And, and yes, Mr. Elmo, I realize that. So, but anyway, we'll get more with that later. Uh, we got ready to open. It was an August day. They predicted 764 students for Bluegrass Middle School. By the second day, we had 800. The third day, we had 804. Uh, we ended that year with 818 students. We had behind this building, as uh, they were called, were uh, several relocatables. To the public, they looked like trailers, uh, <laughs> but they were called relocatables. So it was crowded, and uh, we made the best of a very strange situation a lot of days because things happened that we had never even predicted. But 25 years ago, looking through some of those, and I'll, I'll just touch looking uh, through what they had, and we have the tables here that we'll let people peruse through what they had. The hall for the kids, and you'll see this in the film in just a few minutes. The kids, a lot like today, they were concerned about the environment, drugs, AIDS, their social standing. They correctly produced or predicted some of them that even 25 years later, we may have computers and cars. Uh, unfortunately, staff, they generally recognize that you would be replaced by robots. Uh, <laughs> so we still need teachers, don't ever think not. Uh, one of them that was very interested that uh, must have experienced some discipline issues predicted that in 25 years, discipline, you would simply send them to the office and they would be zapped. <laughs> Didn't explain what that would be, but it was going to be terrible. Uh, some thought the air would be very clean. Some thought it would be very dirty in 25 years. The hole in the ozone was a big concern mentioned uh, time and time again. The overriding theme in 1990 was the war. If you'll remember, we had sent troops there. We had some things to the yellow flag over there. That was one of the prevailing themes till they come home you'll see a lot in there about parents leaving and parents coming back home. Uh, it's also interesting because they were middle school students. Many declared their undying love for fill in the blank. Uh, several mentioned their undying love for several. Uh, even put the number of kids they were going to have. So I'm not how, sure how that helped them all out. But anyway, it's been a wonderful time anticipating digging this up. I cannot say enough about this staff to my left. As Mr. Burke said, first middle school to uh, have rewards under the CARA testing program many years ago. Probably the best staff I could have assembled uh, under any circumstances. So I applaud this staff, if you would too, applaud them. They did a wonderful job. It was a pleasure being principal here from 1990 to 1998. So I uh, thank you for that. I'm going to turn this over to uh, Mr. Elmore. We had several things when you see here, I, I don't want to steal your thunder, but uh, some people you may not see much. Uh, we had some uh, tapes that uh, Mr. Elmore has digitized. And so some people have a lot of things. Some people you go, well, they didn't do much for the time uh, capsule or whatever. So just what you see here is kind of, uh, hard to put in perspective. But Mr. Elmore has done a fantastic job of digitizing some of these uh, tapes, and we'll show that in a minute. I went in there and I offered my technical services to him. He said, uh, you don't laugh yet, you don't laugh yet. So I said, uh, Mr. Elmore, I'd be happy to help you on that uh, technical part of digitizing these. He said, well, I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna put them in the cloud. And I said, well, I just came in and it looks clear out there. <laughs> and he said, I'll probably just do this by myself. <laughs> so again, thank you for coming out tonight. It's been wonderful. 
uh, stay around. We're going to open some things and browse through what you with. Again, I thank you, the original staff of uh, Bluegrass, for the support and friendship over all these years. So I'll turn it over to my technical assistant, Mr. Elmer. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Reed. Um, what you're going to see in a few minutes is we took the uh, VHS tapes that were actually in the capsule, and um, it's amazing how well it was sealed, um, how deep it was. Um, uh, we had to actually get a tool to get the stuff out. It was so deep, it's like five feet deep. But um, of course, when you know VHS tapes, uh, I'm sure that was a popular thing at the time, but they degrade and so some of the videos you don't get to see a lot of but there's a lot of material still there and and, uh, and that has been converted to um, uh, mp4 in case okay <laughs> but um, you know, the first thing you'll see is um, a trailer we created and um, and that's on our website right now and then this video will be on our website on Monday if you'd like to have a copy um, I explained to Mr. Reed that I could airdrop it to him and uh, <laughs> so um, I can get you a copy in whatever form you need me to, but uh, so we'll, we'll show that. I'll shut the lights off so you can see it and we'll get that started. Do you, know to, do you know how to zoom in and everything? There you go. Get out of my way, man. You get taped. It's so close. Chichi. Yada, yada. Yoda. What's it got to do with your topic? Uh, it, it shows the notion of how difficult it was to achieve excellence. With Eleanor Savko's eighth grade language arts class. We're making this tape for you for our time capsule that will be open in the year 2016. Our students are all excited about making this tape for you I'm just fine.
be able to two students. Here we have Melanie Cooney. And next to her is Jawanda Moffitt. And let's hear what they have to say. years from now. Okay. Uh, you mean as a student or as a teacher or just life in general? Life in general. Oh my. Life in general. Um, hmm. I think um, we probably will be living on the moon. I think we probably will be able to take vacations on the moon. And I'm not too sure.
got there. Squeeze through that. I think the prevailing theme of that, and uh, one of the things I was going to mention, one of the kids put in there and uh, wasn't too excited about the assignment for doing the time capsule, and he just started off and said, really, how much can change in 25 years? So it's pretty amazing. But I appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Again, thanks to Mr. Elmore for putting that together. That was excellent. And to the staff of, uh, and the faculty of Bluegrass, uh, really appreciate it. I hope it meant something, jogged a lot of memories. And uh, give us a minute. We will uncover. We have tables on both sides. You can go down both sides of them, look at what's in there. It's kind of self-explanatory or not. Who, who knows? Uh, we also have uh, desserts, of cakes, and uh, soft drinks up here if you want to do it. So, again, uh, thank you for coming out tonight. Anybody have anything to add? Thank you. Mr. Ritchie, uh, two things for the original staff. Uh, there's a banner up here if you will sign, and also the original staff. I have something for you up here. Uh, if you'd stop by and simply pick up one of these packets, uh, that is from me to you. Uh, uh, no one took any notes that year. Uh, we're, we'll do it all over again. So again, thank you, faculty, appreciate it. Crowd, uh, let us uncover this and we'll have people up here with the cakes and whatever. Thank you. Paul, you